Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He thought we were worth dying for. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah, Father, anoint your word. We come against every work of the enemy, every strategy, every limitation, every power of the wicked one that would try and withstand the word of God. We come with your word that says that you, your word will never return unto you void, but it shall accomplish that which you sent it forth to do in the mighty name of Jesus. So we give you the glory and the honor. Amen and amen. I'm carrying on with the lesson. Pastor Sergi did some last week, improving your personality. I think maybe you wonder why are we going through this. I think it's about time we as a church are equipped for the world. We're equipped to handle the things of the world. We become so holy we, are, holy, we have no earthly use. Yet we are the answer the world needs. What happens is they seem to think we are weak and uh, we can't cope with life. So we, we cling on to Jesus. No, we are the answer the world needs. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We just got to learn how to adapt ourselves so we don't lose our testimony, but we're able to look at the enemy straight in the face and say, listen, I have overcome you by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. So we're not weaklings. We're not overcome by burdens. Yes, you will face challenges, but challenges do not determine who you are. They do not define you. You are a child of the Most High God. You may start out as a babe in Christ, then you become a child, and eventually you become a son. Now a baby, you go around, you pick up things for them. A child, you start teaching them how to pick up things. But the son, you don't expect to be even telling them to pick things up. They just know what it is they need to do. Now that's what we're equipping you for. We passed the baby stage. We passed the child stage. We are becoming the sons of the Most High God. Because when you're the son, you're entitled to an inheritance. Babies don't get an inheritance. Children don't get an inheritance. If you read the word, it says that when, the child, when a child becomes a king, they have instructors. But you are not children. I believe if you're coming to FCI, there's enough word that is being preached each and every Sunday that can make you grow and increase and overcome and become a man and woman that is somebody to take note of, a power to be reckoned with. A force to be reckoned with. And that's what I want you to do. Step up your life. Step it up. Step up your game. Pick up your game as the world say it. You need to know how to dance in this life. Because there's some music playing. And what's happening is we, we're dancing out of step. And then we feel intimidated because we don't know how to dance the step. And I said, but why are you talking about dancing? I'm talking about the game of life. The game of life comes with music. You either know how to play that music or that music's gonna play you. I'm not talking church language, I'm talking world language here. They, that's how they talk to us, they don't care who we are. We need to understand the language they talk so we can talk them down. We need to take our place. I'm not angry, I'm not shouting, and I'm not talking without love. I love you, that is why I'm telling you. I could leave you where you're at and just come here, preach a sermon, hallelujah, bless you, humble and leave you where you're at. No, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in you as a person. Your success means a lot to me. Your conquering in this life means the world to me. It gives me great joy when I see people overcome the littlest of things. Because if you don't overcome, the enemy is going to overcome you and keep you a victim. You are not a victim, you are a victor. It doesn't matter how much money you have. 
I guarantee you right now, for some of you, I can give you 10 million today. By Wednesday, it's gone. Because you don't have the knowledge how to handle it. Money is not what makes you successful. It's the power to handle it. It's the knowledge. And why I'm talking about your personality is your personality comes with self-restraint. Comes with a determination to learn, to grow, and to maintain. And then to develop and go higher. Because how many of you know when you have little, you want more? It's not enough just to have a little. That's all part of your personality. You see, we started out with many issues in our lives. All of us. Oh, some of us still have many issues. We just covered it up very well. And there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you're dealing with them and you're not staying with them. You can cover it up and be diplomatic about it. But realize for yourself that you have issues and deal with them. Don't blame other people for your issues. I spent quite a bit of time with my grandchildren this week. I had the opportunity and the privilege which I really have. And I noticed that they play the blame game. And of course, they had to have grandma. Whenever something happened, it's because of David. Stephanie, what did David do? No, but I fell because him. I said, no, you weren't looking where you were going. Now listen, these are children. But come on, we are adults. When I make a mistake, isn't it the same thing? It's because of so-and-so and so-and-so. And the whole week, eventually, by Saturday, no one was calling, it was David. No, it was me, Grandma. Pick up my bike and keep moving. Because I was trying to get a message to them that I want to get out of their system from a young age. I want them to learn it's not someone else's fault. I have to get myself right. Pastor, they're children. If I don't train them as children, they'll become habits. If you remember what we said earlier in this teaching, let me reiterate something over here. Just to show you that when I'm talking to you, the same things I teach you, it says, watch your thoughts, they become words. Watch your words, they become actions. Watch your actions, they become habits. So if I constantly blame somebody else, it'll be my habit to pass the buck. And you know what? When you learn to accept that you are responsible for your own errors, you develop yourself as a person. Because now you're learning to take responsibility. That's what it is. You know when David sinned and the prophet came to him, the minute the prophet said, you are that man, David didn't say, oh, but you know. No, he said, I am. And he went to God and he said, Lord, forgive me for I have sinned against you. He says, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Take not, the, give me the joy of your salvation. But he acknowledged, he said, against thee and against thee only have I sinned. And that was a man that God called a man after his own heart. God is looking for a man and a woman that will acknowledge, I have a weakness, but I want to overcome it, Lord. And that's why Jesus said it was very necessary that I send the Holy Spirit. Because you see, the Holy Spirit will live on the inside of you and he'll help you overcome the weaknesses that we have. Every one of us have weaknesses, brother. My brother and my sister, I have to tell you that no matter how powerful that speaker is that speaks to you, there's an Achilles heel somewhere in there. That's the problem why people mess up is because they never recognize or never come to the point where they will acknowledge we have a problem. The minute you acknowledge it, Oh, you have conquered the world. You've conquered a mountain. Because that thing can never mess with you again. Because you've acknowledged it. And you've spoken to it. And the name of Jesus will overcome it for you. The power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you will allow you to overcome and get bigger. So you can face the next mountain. 
because there are many mountains in your life that constantly, some of us keep going around and around and around because we never acknowledge that we have a mountain that we are facing. Am I losing some of you? It, it's the reality of our lives. It's either the uh, 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 sin problem, it's smoking, drinking, uh, hatred, a spirit of lust. We, we need to acknowledge it's something that bothers you. And once you acknowledge it, you will overcome it. But for as long as it overcomes you and causes you to feel bad about it, and you have, and you know, when you feel justified or people around you and you say, yeah, it's so and so, and they say, yes, it is, you look for those people, don't you? You notice you're looking for sympathizers. I don't like sympathizers in my life. Anyone that tries to take my part, I wonder, are you helping me or are you keeping me where I'm at? And too many of us have had sympathizers who've managed to keep our address the same for many years to come. See, because they like you at that address because it's company for them. Get rid of those people from your life. Move on. Move on. And have you noticed that negative people draw negative people? The minute you are drawing negative people, you need to look at yourself and say, mm hmm, you need to get yourself right, girl. Start moving forward. You're attracting the wrong people. You need to attract successful people. You need to attract people, and I don't mean this in a, 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 a in a sexual connotation. I mean the law of attraction of success, where you attract the kind of people that are going to enhance and develop your personality and make you a better person and make you reach deep within yourself so you can go forward and upward. Because I believe there are giants and kings in here that can do mighty things. Some mountains are waiting for you to conquer them. They know that you are the person that will conquer them. But because you haven't understood who you are. The devil has managed to keep you at that address. No, it's time to move on and go higher. Amen? Romans chapter 12 verse 3 says, for by grace are you saved. Do, uh, uh, sorry, by grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with a sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. One of the things you have to do is let your life be ignited with enthusiasm, with passion. You know, when you have a passion, people are attracted to you. Dreamers who dream big notice you. Why? It's your enthusiasm that shows them I can go somewhere with that person. That person can help me achieve my dream. And while you're helping them achieve their dream, they're helping you achieve your dream. So when you have enthusiasm, you have to be a person who inspires others. Then you draw on the Spirit of God that inspires you. Because now you're giving up from what's on the inside of you. Your cup now becomes a little emptier and the Spirit of God begins to fill you with knowledge, understanding, wisdom. Enthusiasm is a vital quality that will rouse you into action. Do not be the kind of person who dwells on the negative things. Avoid self-pity. You notice where I went first, okay. Surround yourself with enthusiastic people. Enthusiasm is contagious. Passion is contagious. It's absolutely contagious. So, if you want success, ignite in your life that enthusiasm. And so the law of, a law of attraction will attract successful people towards you. Get enthusiastic about your work, your dreams, and about life. Do not fake enthusiasm. You may start out faking it, but soon you'll be making it. I think I've majored on this one too much, proper attire. How you dress affects people's perception of you. You've got to dress for success. There's something called in the business world power dressing. Do you know what that is? It means 
you dress in such a manner that people notice you. No, 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 no not in a, a skin scamp or whatever those attires are where they show certain parts that shouldn't be shown. No, I'm talking about a business suit. I'm talking about proper clean shoes. It doesn't have to be brand new. It doesn't have to be branded either. It doesn't have to be, have a name tag. Just got to be, you dress in a way that people take notice. Wear a business suit if you're going to a business meeting. You're going to a place for an interview, dress properly. They'll notice you. Let me tell you practical things about an, an interview when you're going for a job. Or if you are in a job and you want promotion, do things that are not expected of you. Do things outside of your job. If something's on the floor, pick it up. If somebody is visiting, make them a cup of coffee. You'll be amazed how people notice it. That you will be amazed at how people notice you. I was reading this book. It's, it's not even a Christian book, but it's called on Wealth Creation. I'm in the pursuit of wealth. I'll tell you why. I want to be one of the biggest givers in the kingdom of God. And I'm, I'm quite open about it. I'm, I, I pursue wealth so that I can give into the kingdom of God. Because the only way that people are going to take notice of you, you see, a wise man is not noticed. A poor man is not no, A wise poor man doesn't make much of an impact. But a rich man, people listen to them. So you'd rather be wise and rich so you can have a voice. Amen? So, it's about time we equip ourselves so that we can become a power to be reckoned with, a force to be reckoned with. When you dress in a manner that makes a difference, people want to hear your advice because all of a sudden you're setting yourself up on a platform that people take notice. Amen? People tend to treat you the way you are dressed People treat you well when your body language speaks louder than your words. What is your body language? Where you a man and woman of action, where you over deliver and under talk. Too many people can sell their mouths off. When it comes to delivery, very low. If you are in any field of expertise, learn more about your field. Read up more. Find out from other people who are more skilled than you. And this book says that the more you pursue your skill, promotion and wealth will follow you. It says you don't have to ask for promotion. The mere fact that you have excelled, you've worked beyond what was expected of you, people will take notice and promotion will follow you. But it takes a determination on the inside, that enthusiasm, the passion to go and seek information. Now, I'm not talking about big things here. Just think of a man like Joseph. Joseph was a slave when he got to Potiphar's house. But he soon learned a skill he never knew before. He took on the skill, and that's where Potiphar noticed him. That he promoted him to the head of the household. My brother and my sister, if you're not getting promoted, check how you're working. Check whether you've improved yourself. I was 37 years old when I did my degree. Not 20. I never had money at 20. My father refused to pay my uh, studies. Not that he didn't have the money. He didn't like the choice of a husband. So he says, well, I'm not paying. You won't listen to me. That's your problem. But God had a plan for my life. So when I, got to, when I was 37 years old, the company I worked for paid for my degree. But I wasn't shy to study. I went to class, and all the people were young. They were 20, just out of school. I never let them intimidate me. I just studied. And out of the entire degree, I failed two subjects, accounting and economics. But I pursued it, and I got it. After three and a half years, I was 40 when I finished my degree. No excuses. We can do it. The problem is we look, oh, but we were 
uh, people didn't make, uh, give us an opportunity, it's this, it's that. No. Set your mind and your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. Commit your way to him and he will direct your path. I want to tell you, I didn't just do that degree. I went before the Lord. I committed every subject to, that, to the Lord. I broke bread. I fasted and I declared the word of the Lord. And that's how. I did not pass because I'm so intelligent. Oh, my. Uh -uh. Because of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of the grace and the favor. So you can do anything. You can do anything. You can do anything anything. All things are possible to them that believe. So I'm saying to you, don't stay where you at. Don't let the limitations of how you think. Go and broaden your mindset. You want to broaden your mind, start with the word. Start with the word of God. Go and learn the word. If you don't like reading it like this, go and read it in the message Bible. Oh, my time's already gone. Go read it in the Message Bible and start to understand. So you start to think differently. You see, you grew up in an environment where things were told to you that the, there were limits put on your mind because of the environment you were in, that certain things you could not do. So as a result, as you grew and you, uh, and you uh, became older and you acquired things in life, your mindset still kind of held you back because when you saw certain kind of people, they intimidated you. If they knew a little bit more than you, immediately you withdrew within your shell. I was there, I know. I worked in HR and all the people in human resources used to talk a certain language. They never used to say the whole word. They used to use uh, the initials, of, like the letters, you know? Like not uh, computers, they said IT. They would say words... It, it, it used to kind of intimidate you. And then I thought, no, uh-uh. So what I used to do is sit on the sidelines and listen to the language. Then I go read it up. Then the next meeting I go to, I'm getting a little bit more of the language. And then when I talk, I have a voice now because I learned the language. Now they started to take notice. Who's this person? Now she was quiet before all the time. But you see, it took a determination to learn to fit into the culture. I didn't come from their culture. These were all, sorry to say this and be racialistic, but whiteies that ruled the roost. I mean, they had all the top jobs. They sat up there. And here comes this Indian girl. Oh, well, didn't look quite Indian because the hair was all kinds of colors. But So they weren't sure how to handle me. You know what I'm talking about, but you're shy to say it, so it's fine. I'll say it for you. So I've been as intimidated as you've been, but I had to go in the background and learn and study and wonder and pick up some stuff so that when I went there, I wasn't ill-equipped. I was a little bit more skilled. So I went and read some books. I studied and I, I, I went in, I found out things on the internet. I found out ways to communicate. And then I began to talk. When I went for an interview, I only went for about four interviews in my life because praise God, his grace was on me. He would open doors for me in many ways. But when I went for interviews, I wasn't shy to say, I don't know, but I'm willing to learn. Give me anything. I said, and I, I never talked salary to them. If they said 3,000, I said, it's okay. I said, but it won't be for long. That's what I used to say it in the interview. They used to look at this person. I mean, they must have laughed at me, some of them. But you know what? The minute they employed me, they began to realize there's something here. But they didn't just employ me. God opened the door for me to do what I needed to do. Amen? So if I can encourage you this morning, take a leaf out of our booklets of our lives and begin to do it. Stability. Be stable in what you believe in. Keep your models, your ethics, and your values. Have a good work ethic. Decide that this is the way I work. I work with excellence, and that's just the way it's going to be done. And once you do that, I want to say to you, setting yourself on a course of good success.
Stability is the ability to stand firm in what you believe in, not allowing the passions of your life to sway you. Stability is mastering oneself. It is taking victory over your emotions and your passions. Don't go for a job because it pays more. Please, job satisfaction is very important. When you're going for more money, always put into the calculation the, the distance you're going to be traveling, the petrol, the hours you're going to be away. Very important, you need to put that into your equation. Too many people go and they go, I'm gonna earn a thousand more, but they don't take into consideration the cost of earning a thousand more. If you need help, get a hold of me, I'll help you. We can make a decision, I'll help you make a decision. Because there are many factors you need to factor in before you just jump from job to job. It takes, it is taking victory over your emotions and passions. Please, when you are in a work situation, don't be a crybaby. No matter how you want to cry, never show your weakness. Don't expose your weakness. They will nail you on your weakness every time. Strong people will intimidate you by shouting at you because if they see you that you back down every time they shout, they will shout more. No, you stand up. I don't like the way you're speaking to me. You want to tell me something? Say it properly. Oh, that guy will, or that woman will back up quickly. Don't show your weakness. Stand strong. Know who you are. Self-control is one of the most important qualities in your life. Without you, out it, you can easily hurt yourself and others, both physically and emotionally. A person given to emotions. One day you walk in, ha, 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 I'm happy. Next day you walk in, mm -hmm, don't talk to me. What message are you sending? Of course you're happy, you're sharing scripture, east, west, north, and south. Next day you said, <coughs> They think, how? What? Is Christianity like this? No. Take control of your emotions. That's one of the keys of your life. Every one of us have emotions. We all get angry. We all can get happy. You just keep it stable. That's all. You can have your happy moments. Share that at home. You have a sad moment. Share it at home. At work, you just stay. That's it. Just even-tempered. Diplomatic, strong, successful. Be happy with those that are happy. Sympathize with those that are sad. But don't go overboard. The Bible says that an unjust balance is an abomination to the Lord. A just balance is his delight. But what are you talking about, Pastor? It comes back to stability and self-control. Don't go. Just stay even. Just go. Just, just Keep your balance in your life. I promise you, when you keep your balance, your emotions won't take you over you, neither will anything else take over you. You'll notice if you're over-emotional, you set yourself up for the devil to tempt you. And if you need affirmation continuously, you're the kind of person that just looks for somebody to praise you. Mm, temptation is soon following by. If you're constantly looking for somebody to praise you, you are looking for trouble. Because the devil goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You notice he's seeking. He's looking for the foolish ones that need that affirmation, need somebody to pick them up, need a friend. No, you just need Jesus. He'll add the rest. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I want to tell you, if you learn some of the things I teach you here in the 7 o'clock service, you will go through life very successfully. You will. I enjoy the 7 o'clock service. Most people wouldn't like it because there's not many people filling the chairs. I'm interested in the few that want to learn. Because those that want to learn, you'll go very far in your life. And I want to tell you, when you learn, 10 more people learn out of you. Because when you are successful, you want to make others successful. Self-confidence. Oh, okay, let me read a little bit more of that self-control. Self-control reveals inner strength. 
People with self-control are in charge of their own lives. They do not allow negative influences to influence their lives. They do not have bad spending habits. Oh, but some of us do, but we learn, you know. I'm, I, I've mastered it, I must tell you that. I can walk in and out the mall without spending a cent. I'm getting it. And if I got it right, you can get it right. I mean, I'm summa on the other side of 50, and I've, uh, God can change me, he can change you. So your spending habits can change. God can change anyone, let me tell you. God can change. This God we serve is faithful, he's wonderful, he's marvelous. He's just looking for a man or woman to lean into him. When you lean into him, oh man, he's awesome. He's just beautiful. He's wonderful. You'll walk through the mall and he won't even let you see anything. I'm telling you. He'll make you even forget you have a purse and money in it. And he'll cause people to give unto your bosom. Press down, shaken together and running over. I'm proof positive of that. I'm telling you. I shared with you a couple of weeks ago, I like spending, I had to take my cards out. Now I've got all my cards back in my wallet and I'm not spending because I stood before you and confessed my faults. God came through and he's helping me. So you see the secret of acknowledging your weaknesses? God can make them right. Matthew 12, 27, verse 12. When he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. Why? Self-confidence. Believe in yourself. You are a child of God. Do not, not allow anything or anyone to belittle you. Have confidence in your abilities. Develop relationships with those who encourage you and build you up. Today, you're going to leave here with this thought. I'm getting rid of those pity party people that like to sympathize with me. I've been in their hotel for too long. I've overstayed my welcome. The best way to build self-confidence is to practice using it. Have confidence in yourself. John 16 verse 27 says, No, the Father himself loves you because you ha he loves me, and because he loves me and have believed that I came from God. Psalm 43 verse 5 says, Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Let's stand together as I come to a close. Did you get something? Take responsibility. Acknowledge your weaknesses. Build your self-confidence. Do more than what is expected of you. You are not called to your job to be a missionary. Okay? Nothing wrong with leaving some uh, faith chronicles or something somewhere for someone to read. But your job is not for you to be a missionary. Please, use your boss's time to do his work. And God will give you the time to do what he called you to do. Amen? So I want to hear that you've got some promotion. I want to hear that you've developed yourself. I want to hear, I don't want to just be louding the applaud of the young people getting these A's and cum laude's and summa cum laude's of what, uh, of what work are. I want to hear the older people coming to me and I want to stand, put you all here to show the young people and say, check this out. I know Gondam's studying. There's quite a few of them that are studying. So I want to hear, I, I want to shout out your praises over here. No more just the young people. I want to shout out the praises of the older people. You got a promotion? I want to hear the older people, not the younger people. I want the older people, us over 40s and over 50s. Because God can do big things in our lives too. Not that there's anything wrong with you young people. I mean, it's, it, we'll leave you to your thunder. But don't steal our thunder, okay? But I want to encourage you this morning. The Lord is with you. He is behind you, before you, and he wants you to overcome. He has great things in store for you, and I particularly want to speak to the older people this morning. There are talents within you you haven't tapped into yet. I encourage you, draw it out of you. The young people are waiting to see the mentors in their lives. Encourage them 
and be a blessing to them. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one. For surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. You are men and women of great worth because God is on the inside of you. He has great things in store with, in you and for you. He wants you to excel. He wants to remind you that you are a victor, not a victim. He wants to remind you that you're a mighty conqueror and there are great mountains to overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. May his grace and his favor go with you all the days of your life. 